with Monster Hunter Rise on the horizon. Get it? Rise? The horizon? No? P please don't close the video. But yes, Monster Hunter Rise is coming very soon and I want to be talking about the things that we should be hyped for in this game. Now I'm not going to mention the new monsters and the maps because that is obviously to be expected from a new Monster Hunter game. So let's get to it. Firstly is the new user interface. So the health and stamina bar display has been changed so that you can see your maximum potential instead of accidentally using a max potion when you already have max health. I've actually, I might have done that a couple of times in world. <laughs> The whole map is shown in the bottom left of the screen. At first, the map will be covered up until you fully explore the area. And monster locations are shown at the start of the hunt. This just means that the scout flies from world is no longer in here. And we don't need to follow them anymore. Thank God for that because sometimes they can be very annoying. However, you won't be able to tell which monster is which until I'm guessing that you fought the monster a couple of times. Additionally, you can zoom into the map to see any collectible items. Bottom middle of the screen will show any wire bugs that is available to use. I will obviously be talking about it a bit more later on in this video. The Palamute. Palamute is a new companion similar to the Palico, aka your cat. However, unlike your cat, you can ride this doggo into battle and while riding it, you can use items. Items such as your whetstone, potions, rations and much more. You can also pet both the Palamute and your Palico if you want to. That feature doesn't really do much, but hey, you get to pet or play with the doggo. And yes, the cat as well, but who really cares about the cat? I mean, cats are just complete wire bugs. The really massive new feature of this game as it can be used in multiple ways. One, it can be used for traversal purposes. So if you want to jump up to places, then the wire bug can help you. Two, it can be used to quickly recover yourself after getting smacked by the monster. Unlike in World, where getting smacked means that you have to play dead or try to get up quickly, only to get smacked again by the monster and then you're actually dead. <laughs> Finally, the other use of the wire bug is using it along with your weapon. All 14 weapons each have their own unique wire bug moves. These moves will either consume one or two wire bugs to activate. For example, the great sword has a unique wire bug move that will move you in a specific direction and it will help sheath the sword. And while doing this, it will increase your attack for a short duration. This is really useful for quickly getting out of a monster's attack and increasing your damage potential. There's a lot of wire bug moves to use, so see what each one can do as it can add on a whole new level of skill and playstyle with each weapon. Also, it's just going to be so much fun using the wire bugs. I can just feel it. New endemic life. There's more endemic life that has been introduced in Rise. One of them is the wire bug. Picking up a wire bug will give you another charge of wire bugs. Meaning that if you were to use a weapon that uses up one wire bug and you pick up an additional wire bug, you can essentially use that wire bug move three times rather than two. Obviously this depends on whether the move takes out one or two wire bugs. However, the picked up wire bug will disappear after some time. So if you want another wire bug charge, then you have to go and get it back or find another one elsewhere. Another type of endemic life is the ones that will increase your character's performance. They can either increase your health, stamina, attack, or defense. These stat changes will only affect the player during the hunt. So if you think it will permanently increase your character's stats, it won't do that. There are some other endemic life to find as well that can help with hunting the monster, but I'm not gonna be talking about all of them. New moves just recently shown is the new switch skills feature. This allows you to change specific attacks for other attacks. This feature will be unlocked as you progress throughout the game. A great example that they have shown for swapping out attacks is the gun lance attacks where you can choose to either use the charge shelling or the blast dash attack. We all know which one we are going for here. There's just no way you won't choose the blast dash. <laughs> the other example that was shown was the greatsword where you can switch between the hunting edge to the adamant charge slash. 
all 14 weapons will have three different switch skills to choose from so that you can customize the way that you want to play. I can't wait to switch in between different movesets and see how it would fit my playstyle. The hunting horn has also been redone so that it is much more easier to use than it is in world. And it looks like a ton of fun for being able to, well, break dance right in front of the monster. Also, as I've already mentioned, every weapon has at least two unique wirebug moves. We know for sure that there is a few wirebug moves that is not in the demo. So when you get the whole game, there's going to be some more moves in there that you have yet to use. Wyvern Raiden, another new feature that is introduced into this version of Monster Hunter. Wyvern Raiden allows you to basically control the monster. By controlling the monster, you can either do the traditional wall bang that you would do in Iceborne with the Clutch Claw, or you can use the monster to fight other monsters. As shown in one of the Rise trailers, you can control Raijang and fire off his beam attack. Also, this just confirms that Raijang is back. I hate him. Why is he back? <laughs> Who told you to come back? Like, why? Another thing to remember is that now that we have Wyvern Raiden, the mountain feature in World is no longer here. Meaning that you can no longer mount on monsters like you would in World. So don't be expecting to see that anymore. It must be sad times for insect glaive users. <laughs> you know, since we get to mount on the monsters so many times. I understand your pain. It feels like we've lost part of ourselves, you know? Just sucks. <laughs> Kamura Village, the new main hub area, is looking very cool. You are also able to use the wire bug in the village to traverse the area. I really like this feature because right now in World or Iceborne, it feels so boring just running back and forth between the armory or the canteen. <sighs> However, now that we can use our wire bugs in the hub, then I'm just gonna have fun spamming out the wire bug and maybe there's some little hidden areas in the village to look out for. It also gives you the chance of practicing your wirebug skills because I remember booting up the demo for the first time and the wirebug takes a little while to get used to. I'm probably still not used to it. Another great thing they allowed in the main hub is that we can now look at the quests without going to the board. Thank the lord. Oh my god, I find it so annoying having to run back to the board or the handler just to load up the next hunt or mission every damn time. Also a great thing for you people who have friends to play with, let me just <clears throat> try in the corner by myself, you are now able to chill in the main hub together. Rather than an Iceborne or World, you would have to go into the Gathering Hub, which I kind of found a little bit stupid at times. I just found it odd for a game like this where, you know, co-op is the main focus. That actually might have been my problem with this rather than other people, so my bad for you people who are already used to this. The new training area. This is quite unique than it is compared to World. The training area looks much more better in both terms of visual looks and the capabilities. Visually, it looks really cool with the whole monster dummy looking thing in the middle. Whereas in World, it just looks like someone tried the best to make something work. They also have a firing range, which is useful for you bow and heavy and light bow gun users. Again, this just looks very cool. Capability wise, this training area now allows you to link up with other players. This can be incredibly useful for testing out builds together or maybe showing your friend how to do something in person rather than having to tell them how to do it. Then later hearing that they did it and then when it comes to the hunt, they didn't do it. Like, come on bro, you betrayed my expectations. How could you? Additionally, you can customize what kind of attacks the monster dummy can do. Again, very useful for testing out various things that you can do with whatever weapon you're using. I can see myself testing a bunch of guard points from the charge blade against this dummy. The Rampage mode. This mode looks like a tower defense mode, where you get to fight off waves of monsters and you have to defend the village from being destroyed by them. You get to go around and build traps or other installations like a Dragonator to fight off the monsters. Also, the NPCs that you have interacted with will be able to join the fight as well. In order for you to complete this mode, you'll need to defeat a major threat or an apex monster. The only thing I'm interested in here is the rewards because to be honest, I don't really see the appeal of this mode. 
I mean, it's cool to see this whole tower defense thing and have more than two monsters in a single place, but I'm not really feeling this mode. However, if this mode has some interesting rewards, then I'll be playing it. But I'm not completely sold. What do you guys think about Rampage mode? I would love to hear your thoughts on it as well, whether this is going to be an interesting mode or not. Portability, a feature that a lot of people could care less about, but I think those people underestimate it. Then again, I might be overestimating it myself, but yes, this game is going to be on the Switch, meaning that if you want to go to the toilet and play Monster Hunter, then you can go ahead and do that. Just don't drop it in the toilet. You wouldn't want that. Okay, but a, a better thought is that you could be lying on your bed and playing it. I don't know why I first thought of playing Rise on the toilet when I could have chosen something like outdoors or some other place. Um, yeah, just don't ask me why. And finally, the most unique thing that you should be hyped for in this game is... That is Japanese themed. Let's go weebs. Can I chain assassinate these guys? Ooh, I can. What? <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what happened there? I can't. 